Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today on this episode, we're gonna answer a question from a viewer um, that is is a question in response to the recent frog video I did um, talking about frog colors. So if you wanna uh, check out that video, make sure you go check that one out. But the question is from George. I think you're spot on. Uh, what rod do you use for frogs and what gear ratio is best also? Congratulations on the new baby you'll be an awesome dad. <laughs> Thank you so much for, for not only the question, but the, the uh, kind words. Um, and uh, I'm really excited about having our first child. In fact, tomorrow is the day. It's just crazy. But anyways, um, let's talk about that. So uh, I've actually got a couple different setups for frog fishing. As you know, a hall body frog like this uh, Z-Man Leap Frogs here very, very versatile. You can use it in a lot of different situations, open water over the densest matted grass that you could possibly fish. Uh, and, uh, and so there's, because there's so many different extremes when it comes to frog fishing, there's gonna be a lot of different tackle involved. But really, I keep it down to two different rod and reel combos generally, and, and generally two different uh, types of, of a braided line. And braid is all I use with, with frogs, and we'll talk about that in a second. So the first situation, because we were also, I also did a video on the difference between popping frogs and walking frogs. So a walking frog is like this one right here, very narrow, pointy nose. Uh, this is like your, your traditional, you know, uh, frog. And then you've got a popping style frog that has that popper style concave nose all right that pushes water you know makes a, a nice big splash and and uh, makes a lot of commotion on the surface but it also allows it to keep that bait in one area for a long period of time um, but uh, if I'm going to be fishing open water so what I mean by open water is not necessarily casting into the middle of the lake with a frog it means I'm not really casting the frog in heavy cover. I might be casting it around heavy cover or underneath heavy cover. For instance, skipping it underneath overhanging trees. You see uh, anglers do that a lot. Dean Rojas really made that a, a popular uh, strategy for fishing a frog. Um, uh, you know, casting it, skipping it underneath docks, casting around isolated vegetation or, or, or brush. Um, all those different scenarios, that's what I consider uh, open water because you know, you're, you're essentially not fishing it in the cover, you're fishing it around or underneath the cover. In that situation, what I'm gonna be going with is going to be a slightly shorter rod, okay? So a 7.3 heavy action rod is really what I'm looking at. This right here is the all-purpose series, 7.3 heavy action. This is my favorite for fishing a frog. Uh, they also have a extra heavy action, but I really don't like that one for fishing the frog in open water because I, I feel like the, the little bit of, of a softer tip on the heavy is important for actually working that frog correctly without you know, overpowering it. Uh, I want that bait to be able to walk side to side. So, but it has a ton of backbone. Uh, a 7.3 heavy action rod has a good amount of backbone, which is really important. One thing that you need to remember about uh, choosing your rod in line with a frog is that even if you're not fishing it in super dense cover, you've got some major hardware on this frog. Those hooks are so super thick. They're such a heavy wire that you need a lot of, of power to get those hooks embedded in those fish. So even though you're not fishing super heavy cover, you've got really heavy duty hooks that are designed for pretty much, you know, the, the densest stuff possible and that you need to have a rod that will get those hooks embedded in those fish on a long cast. So that's why I don't really go any lighter than a heavy, heavy action rod. But for those open water situations where I'm making, uh, you know, uh, exact casts, skipping under cover, making pinpoint casts to isolated cover and things like that, I like a 7.3 heavy. And all purpose series is what I go for. All right. And then the other scenario that I, uh, oh, let's actually round out the, the other tackle that I'm also going to be using with this setup. Okay. So, 
when I'm fishing um, open water and just trying to make real fast, you know, presentations and, and reel the frog back back and, and cast to the next, you know, target, that's when I'm going to be using a 8.1 to 1 gear ratio VLD 10 reel. Okay, so this reel right here is what I like to use, 8.1 to 1. Uh, I've got the turbo fatties on it right now, but um, this one right here is is really good, you know, and, and any manufacturer is going to make one of those what they call burner reels, the real fast gear ratio. The the benefit of a 8.1 to 1 gear ratio VLD 10 is the fact that I can uh, reel it in real quick and make another presentation. So very, very efficient, very, very fast, and I can cover more water with it. The downside is that you have less torque because you have the higher gear ratio, just like in your truck or you're your riding a bicycle, the lower the gear, the more torque you have and the easier it is to, to work through, you know, uphill, you know, climbs and things like that. Um, same thing applies to fishing reels. You know, the higher speed gear ratio means that you're going to have uh, uh, you're gonna have to work harder yourself to pull those fish out of cover. So because I'm fishing more open water with the 8.1 to one gear ratio reel, it really doesn't um, it really doesn't hurt you know the the fish fighting capability as much. Uh, but if I was fishing denser cover, which we're gonna talk about, a lower speed gear ratio uh, reel is critical. So. That's what we'll talk about right now. Oh, and the fishing line that I like to use for open water situations is 50 pound braid. Okay, I use the uh, Seaguar Tactics braid. There's a few reasons why I love Tactics. One, it's because um, it, it has a rounder um, uh, shape to it. So it, it's, a, it's a four strand, four carrier braid, uh, and it makes a very round, um, a compact uh, uh, you know, structure. And it also has a little bit, it's not smooth. It actually has, it feels kind of like ribbed. Um, and that's really good. It's, it's almost like rope-like. And that's really good for cutting cover. So cutting vegetation. So if I hook a fish around vegetation, that line will cut through that vegetation as opposed to like, you know, the smooth Seaguar Smackdown, which is smoother, doesn't make as much noise going through the cover, uh, but it also um, it won't slice through the cover near as easy as the Tactics, which has that kind of like sawing texture to it. So 50 pound uh, braid is, is pretty much the lowest I'll go with fishing a frog, even in open water, because you're talking about having to set the hook really hard to get those big hooks into those fish. All right, so the next setup um, that I'm going to be using is for the dense grass situation. So when I'm fishing over uh, matted grass, um, you know, whether it's uh, milfoil, milfoil or hydrilla or even like junk mats, like eel grass mats that are, are you know, blown together or something like that um, with algae on top, that's when I'm going to be using this setup right here, okay? So we're gonna be going with the, the big guns in this type scenario, but it's a, it's, to me, it's the perfect rod for this scenario because it, I can still make long casts. It's not like so stiff that it, it limits your, your, um, your, your accuracy or anything like that, but it has a ton of backbone. And that is the Okeechobee rod from Fitzgerald. This rod, you know, it's named the Okeechobee rod because it's made for dense grass, you know, fishing a variety of baits like the, you know, the turbo fatties that I've got on here, fishing a bunch of different baits, um, you know, uh, in heavy vegetation. So this rod is going to be my favorite because it's a little bit longer. It's a seven, six, um, uh, heavy action rod. It's kind of like a flip, a flip and stick. Um, it's, it's got a ton of backbone. It has just enough, uh, flex in the tip to allow me to make those longer casts and to load up that frog but I can pull fish out of the thickest vegetation with this rod. If you can't pull them out with the Okeechobee rod, um, you're probably not gonna pull them out with any other rod on the market. Um, but, but yeah, this is the one that I like to use. Um, it's just an awesome, awesome, heavy vegetation frog rod. Uh, and then as far as the reel that I use, I use a 7.2 to one gear ratio VLD 10 for the reasons we already talked about. Uh, I need to step down to a lower speed gear ratio 
to be able to have more torque. So when I'm wrenching those fish in through that heavy cover, I need that extra torque. You know, you could even go down to a lower speed gear ratio reel, like a 6.6 .6 to one, and that actually may be pretty beneficial, but I do like the 7.2 to one. I, that one's my favorite for fishing over grass mats because it, I still maintain uh, quite a bit of efficiency, being able to reel it in real fast and make another presentation. Uh, and I also have a good amount of power behind this reel. And then as far as um, fishing grass mats, uh, as far as line, 65 pound braid, no questions asked. That is the line size that you need to be throwing in this situation. You still have a small enough diameter with it to be able to make long casts, but it's strong enough to handle just about anything. And I use tactics again uh, because of the same reasons we talked about. Being able to slice through the cover, the round shape of that line really allows this, this, uh, this technique to be launched way out there. Uh, I, I can make long casts because of that, that, that shape of that braid. But anyways, guys, George, thank you so much for the question. Uh, hopefully I answered it uh, in the best way possible. I'm sorry I didn't have one set up for all my frog fishing, but that is how I break down my frog fishing in general. Um, if you guys are looking for ways to support this channel, uh, one of the ways that you can support this channel is just like George did, ask questions. I love answering questions in video format just like this. So uh, if you want me to do a video on a question that you have, drop a comment below and ask that question and I'll get to you. Um, as long as it's something that I, I feel like I can give some advice on. Uh, also, another way to support the channel is I'm going to be putting some affiliate links in the description below. So if you're looking to buy any of the products that I talk about, you can use those uh, affiliate links to get 10% off of your order and it helps support the channel um, as well. So it's a great, great way to buy products, save some money and support the channel. And then finally, just make sure you like, share, subscribe if you like the video content that I'm putting out there. So uh, anyways, guys, thank you for all the support and I'm going to see you out on the water. Take care.